2016 is a leap year and that makes me very excited as much as I mourn the loss of February no longer being an integer number of weeks long. I still love leap years because frankly calendar drift is a serious issue. In 1627, during the Anglo-French War, the English army invaded a French island on the 12th of July. The French army, however, were ready to defend on the 22nd of July. But it doesn't matter, because those were the same day. Because the French and the English had different approaches to leap years and keeping their calendar drift in check, the 12th of July for one country was the 22nd of July for the other country, it was all very confusing. At the very least, both countries agreed it was a Thursday. Calendars were born way back in prehistory as a way to keep track of the seasons, and to this day we use them for pretty much the same purpose. Sadly, it is not exactly 365 days between the start of one season and the start of the same season a year later. That so-called tropical year is slightly longer than 365 days. Specifically, it is an extra 5 hours, 48 minutes, 45 seconds and 138 milliseconds longer. So one year for our calendar is actually 365.25 five two one eight nine one years long i like to measure how good or bad a calendar is by calculating the number of years rounded to the nearest whole year for how long it takes the seasons to drift one day if you just use a calendar of 365 days and call it done then every four years your seasons will drift by a day that is a terrible amount of calendar drift. Every, let's say, 28 years, summer will start a week later. But it seems that civilizations dealt with this by simply inserting extra holidays. Put a bonus festival into your calendar every now and then, and everything lines back up again. Which brings us to the origins of our current calendar. That's what the Romans did. Politicians would decide occasionally, hey, let's put in a bonus holiday, line everything back up again. But as you come as no surprise, politicians did not have the need of the calendar as their top priority. Above that were their own needs. And so they would actually add festivals more based on how their terms were lining up than on how the calendar was. Some bit part historical figure called Julius Caesar had enough of this. In 46 BCE, he thought he would fix this one day drift every four years by simply putting in an extra day every four years. There was a bit of administrative complications to get the whole thing rolling, but by the third year common era, we had the Julian calendar, which fixed the previous problem. Or rather, he almost fixed it. The new average year length of 365.25 days is not quite what we need. If we want to check how good this calendar is, we can calculate that it will now drift one day every 128 years. I mean, it's a lot better, but it's not perfect. But how bad is that? It's one extra day every 128 years. That's longer than a century. Who's going to notice that? Well, by the 16th century, people were noticing it. By then, through all the various calendar changes, everything was out by around about 10 days. Pope Gregory XIII thought he better get this fixed, and so he hired some mathematicians to look into it. And they noticed while going up from 365 to 365.25 days was an improvement, we had overshot the mark ever so slightly. In fact, we had three more leap days every 400 years than we needed. And so a simple plan was concocted. Well, I say simple plan, it's all relative, isn't it? This was the new system they come up with. They kept the old Julian calendar approach of if the year was a multiple of four, you add a leap year. They then added a sub clause that if the year is also a multiple of a hundred, you don't add the leap year. But then if it's a multiple of 400, you do put the leap year in anyway, which is why 1800 was not a leap year, 1900 was not a leap year, 2000 was a leap year, multiple of 400, problem solved. I mean, the problem with this fix is it involves convincing everyone in the world to not only simultaneously switch calendars to calculate leap years a different way, but on top of that, you've got to take off that bonus 10 days that have managed to creep in to bring everything back into alignment. Well, the one great thing about being a pope, I guess, is that you're good at convincing a lot of people to change their behavior on seemingly arbitrary reasons. And so in 1582, the Gregorian calendar was rolled out. 
Well, I say everyone changed in 1582. Some of the less Pope-friendly countries refused to get on board, but within another century or so, it became pretty obvious that the Gregorian calendar was superior to the Julian calendar. And so in 1752, England and all of its colonies, including the soon-to-be United States of America, swapped over and everyone finally was on a new calendar. How good is the Gregorian calendar? Well, because the average year length is now 365.2425 days long, and that is disturbingly close to the actual tropical year, we only drift one day every 3,216 years. That's good. I mean, it's so good, this is the calendar we continue to use to this very day. Well, hang on, there's still a slight discrepancy. Surely we can do better than this. I mean, sure, 3,216 years doesn't seem very long to us, but to our distant descendants, it's still going to be a problem. And so I thought, well, hang on, surely we can add in a few more rules to correct that slight remaining difference. And I worked out we need to take out another three leap year days every 10,000 years. And it's okay, I've got a system. Current system recap, multiple of four, leap year. Multiple of 100, not a leap year. Multiple of 400, leap year again. Here's what I'm gonna add underneath. Ignoring the tens of thousands and above in any given year. If you just take the thousands and the hundreds, so the two digit number of centuries, if that is now a multiple of 28, instead of having a leap year, which is predicted by the Gregorian calendar, you don't have a leap year. And that takes out three leap years every 10,000 years and they're reasonably spaced. Look, the easy way to remember this is if you're in a year which goes blah, 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 and then ends 2,800 or 5,600 or 8,400, in any of those cases, you don't have a leap year. Otherwise, carry on with the Gregorian calendar as intended. How good is my calendar? Well, if we add on the 2,800 year rule, as I'm now calling it, the resulting calendar only drifts one day every 91,743 years. Now, come on, that is a lot better. Problem solved. But then it occurred to me, maybe fixing the Gregorian calendar is patching a sinking ship. Maybe we have to go back a few more versions, roll right back to the Julian calendar before we try and release an update to fix this bug. The Julian calendar, as you remember, drifts one day every 128 years. But the creepy thing is, it's almost exactly 128. It's 128.026. We can nearly completely fix the Julian calendar by just skipping one leap day every 128 years. Oh, but it's not easy to spot every multiple of 128. How are we going to know when to have and not have leap years? Well, look, it's very straightforward. From now on, we just write all years in binary. So we have the standard. If it's a multiple of four, you have a leap year. That's easy. Are the last two digits zeros? And if it's a multiple of 128, are the last seven digits zeros? You don't. So you just look. Last two digits zero, leap year. Unless the last seven digits are zero, no leap year. The 128 calendar is incredibly good. It only drifts one day every 625,000 years, over half a million years before you drift one day. And if we choose to fix that, let's say we take out every leap day on a year, which is a multiple of 625,024 for convenience, then this new calendar drifts one day every 53 and a half trillion years years. That's longer than the sun is going to last. I think we have this sorted. Oh, one last tiny, insignificant, almost, you know, trivial, slight thing to bear in mind. As wonderful as these mathematically precise calendars are, where we very strategically insert leap days exactly where we need them, the solar system itself is not so cut and dried. Very sadly, everything from the Earth's orbit to its rotation is constantly changing. The solar system is a sloshy mess. Everything is drifting this way and the other. So long term, we have no idea how long a day or a year will be. From what we can tell, in recent history, the length of a day has actually got 1.7 milliseconds longer every century. So as the day gets longer, if the year stays the same, we actually need fewer and fewer days in the calendar which means one day in the distant possible future, a year could actually be an exact integer number of days. If a tropical year stays exactly where it is at the moment, which it won't, but 
go with me here. And the day continues to get longer at the same rate, which also it won't, but again, continue bearing with me here. I estimate around about 3,372,000 years from now, give or take a bit, the length of a year will go from being slightly over 365 days to being slightly under 365 days. And somewhere in that crossing, for a brief instant, we will have an integer number of days per year. That is the optimal time to buy a calendar. Thank you so much for watching my video all about leap years. One last thing to mention, where I did a little bit of research to see if anyone else had come up with the 128 rule. Of course, other people had, including mathematician Adam Gucci. He came up with the 128 rule, but by a slightly different and I'm prepared to admit nicer method. He took the length of a tropical year, only he used the measurement from 2000, whereas I used the measurement from 2010. And of course, since then it's drifted by 52 milliseconds why wouldn't it? But anyway, he used 365.2421897 as opposed to 891, which I used. And then he turned that into a continued fraction. I love continued fractions, but it's a whole topic for another video. They're brilliant if you haven't seen them. And as he looked down the continued fraction, he went, wait a minute, that 27 is pretty massive. I reckon I can lop off the continued fraction here and get a good approximation. He rolled that back up again and found that the bonus amount of year is about 31, 128. The Julian calendar gives you an extra quarter of a day, which is 32, 128. And so by taking out that extra one day of 128 years, you go down to 31, 128. Again, a fantastic approximation. Okay, one final, final point, and then I swear the video is over. What I see is the major downside to the 128 rule is the first year it deviates from the current Gregorian calendar will be in the year 2048, which also happens to be the first power of two year. We have had for a very long time, not since the year 1024, and not again until 4096, where we have a power of two year. What a year that's going to be. We're going to be having non-stop powers of two parties. No one's going to pay any attention attention to a debate about leap years in such a fantastic power of two years. So frankly, we might have to wait a while before we can have any lasting calendar change.